A team of archaeologists uncovers a giant ceramic vase in the ruins of an ancient Greek city. They carefully brush away the sand and debris that surrounds it. The head archaeologist grabs a ladder and places it gently against the eight-foot-tall vase. I'm gonna see if there's anything inside, he says. The archaeologist climbs the ladder and peers over the lip of the ceramic vase. The inside is completely black. I can't see anything, he shouts down to the rest of the team. He reaches his arm into the pot to see if he can feel anything. A couple of seconds later, he releases a yelp of pain. Something bit me, he yells. The archaeologist pulls his hand out of the darkness and climbs down the ladder. Is there an animal inside? A fellow archaeologist asks. But before the question can be answered, the ceramic vase begins to shake. Thousands of tiny creatures resembling a rat mixed with a pug flood out of the top of the vase. They start clawing and biting the archaeologists. The men run away screaming in terror. Many are consumed by the wave of creatures. Others are overwhelmed as they try to scramble up the ruins to safety. Only minutes after the lead archaeologist stuck his hand into the ceramic vase, the screams are silenced. The creatures wander aimlessly around the ancient Greek city. The SCP Foundation hears of the incident and sends a team to investigate. They classify the anomalous vase as SCP-019. When they arrive on the scene, the thousands of creatures that were manifested from the vase are found dead. These entities are designated SCP-019-2 and incinerated before any tourists visiting the archaeological site see the corpses. The extraction team examines the vase itself. It seems like a normal, although very large, ceramic from antiquity. The scientists put in charge of securing SCP-019 are Dr. Light and Dr. Vox. Be careful, Light says. We don't know what the connection is between the vase and these creatures. It seems as if they came out of it, but our instruments aren't detecting anything inside and there's no way they could have all fit into that thing anyway. Dr. Vox, who is closely examining the vase, comes to the same conclusion. They take a step back as the extraction team prepares to put ropes in place to move SCP-019. A rope is thrown over the vase. Part of it lands on top of the lip. Instantly, an instance of SCP-019-2 appears from the ceramic. It begins running around, clawing and biting anything it can, but is eventually captured by Dr. Vox. Well, now we know where the creatures came from. We'll bring it back to the lab for further study, the doctor says as he hands the creature off to one of the agents. The ropes are secured and the team begins to move the vase, but with every moment, another SCP-019-2 instance appears from the artifact. <sighs> this is gonna get really annoying, says Dr. Light. Let's put the whole damn thing in a mobile containment chamber and let those little creatures run on top of each other rather than us chasing them around. Agreed, replies Vox. A containment pod is brought in. The team quickly moves SCP-019 into it, as instance after instance of SCP-019-2 manifest from the vase. The doors to the pod are sealed. Light and Vox watch hundreds of small creatures run around inside. They bring the vase secured in the containment pod back to the SCP Foundation site, where it can be studied further. It is transferred to a containment chamber where it is observed by Light and Vox. After a few days, SCP-019 slows the manifestation rate of the SCP-019-2 creatures. When the vase was first secured, agents were ordered to shoot the creatures on sight, but the number of bullets being used was unreasonable, so they resorted to flamethrowers. The doctors decided the best course of action is to put SCP-019 into a room hooked up to an incinerator. This way, if too many creatures are manifested, they can all be burnt to a crisp with the push of a button. Dr. Vox can't help but think that this must have been what Captain Kirk felt like on the Starship Enterprise when it became infested with Tribbles. Eventually, it is discovered that as long as SCP-019 is kept at zero degrees Celsius and no one goes near it, the object only manifests one creature per hour. This is much easier to manage than the hordes of SCP-019-2 instances that came out of the vase previously. Doctors Light and Vox observe and collect data on SCP-019 through a glass viewport that looks into its containment chamber. The incinerator is turned on at least every 24 hours just to clear the room of creatures. When they are not working with the vase itself, the doctors examine SCP-019-2 entities to try and understand what they are and what they want. They capture one of the creatures and put it in a reinforced pen. 
Light and Vox provide the specimen with live chickens for food and as much water as the creature can drink. The noises that SCP-019-2 makes sounds like muffled sets of words. When linguists are brought in, they determine that the vocalizations are phonetically similar to ancient Hellenic languages. This is consistent with what was spoken at the ancient Greek city, where the ceramic vase was found. The doctors gave the specimen a series of puzzles to solve. It can make its way through a maze to find a piece of chicken, but when it is given opportunities to show its sentience, SCP-019-2 always falls short. Dr. Light and Dr. Vox determine the creatures are about as intelligent as lab rats. One of the most peculiar things is that SCP-019-2 instances only live for less than 48 hours. No matter how much food, water, or care is given to the creatures, they drop dead in a day or two after being manifested. Dr. Light moves one of the dead critters to an operating room where it can be dissected. She cuts down the middle of its stomach with a scalpel and peels the skin and muscle away. Well, that explains that, she says to the other researchers standing in the room. The muscles seem to degrade rapidly from the instant SCP-019-2 is manifested into our world. There is basically no digestive tract other than a mouth and throat, but the most surprising thing is the complete lack of internal organs. Dr. Vox pushes the intercom button from the viewing room in which he is observing the procedure. What do you mean there are no internal organs? It must have some sort of brain and cardiovascular system. Yeah, but that's about it, Dr. Light responds. There appears to be a very simple central nervous system with a brain the size of a pea and a heart, but nothing else. This creature can't metabolize the food it eats or filter out toxins, and I have no idea how it breathes. We need to run more tests. With each new specimen that's examined, the results are the same. The creatures aren't very intelligent. They die in under 48 hours, and they lack pretty much any internal organs. Then one day, everything changes for the worst. The guard posted to watch over SCP-019 notes something strange occurred during his shift. Without fail, the vase manifests an instance of SCP-019-2 every hour. But around 3 a.m., no creature was generated or at least that's what appeared to happen. The guard puts on protective equipment and enters the room to get a closer look, but there is nothing there. He locks up, records the anomaly, and returns to the viewing glass to continue his watch. Over the next hour, the vase manifests a creature as if everything is back to normal. The next day, Light and Vox arrive at work to find everything in chaos. The power in different sections of the facility is failing. It is as if something has gotten into the ducts and is chewing through the wiring. A team of agents uses thermal imaging devices to track down the entity that is causing all the mayhem. They bring it back to the research lab. Take a look at this, the agent says pointing at an empty operating table. He hands Dr. Light his thermal imaging goggles. Without them, there appears to be nothing on the table, but when she looks through the device, she can see an instance of SCP-019-2. My god, Dr. Light whispers. They're evolving. The creature is exactly the same as all the others, except this one is invisible. Suddenly, an alarm goes off and red warning lights turn on across the facility. Light rips off the goggles and looks at Dr. Vox. We need to get back to the vase now, she yells. They sprint out of the operating room and down the hall. As they turn the corner, they hear gunshots and the spray of fire from flamethrowers. On the other side of the corridor where SCP-019 is contained, there are agents battling with thousands of instances of SCP-019-2. The flamethrowers that had been so effective at killing the creatures now appear useless. It is as if the creatures have evolved some sort of protective skin to combat the flames. Oh no, gasps Dr. Light. We gotta get out of here. She grabs Dr. Vox's shoulder and drags him with her as she runs down the hall. Behind them, the scream of agents can be heard. They are quickly muffled as thousands upon thousands of SCP-019-2 creatures overwhelm them. Light glances behind her to see what is happening. What she finds is a wall of creatures rushing towards her. There must be millions now. It seems like SCP-019 was tired of being contained by the Foundation and has sent an invasion force to escape its captors. We're not going to make it! Vox yells. He stumbles and falls to the ground. Dr. Light skids to a stop and turns to go back for him. But it's too late. The wave of SCP-019-2 is closing in. She watches in horror as Dr. Vox is consumed by the mass of creatures. She turns and continues to run. The exit is in sight. 
Dr. Light makes a dash towards the door. She can feel the tiny feet of the creatures clawing at her heels. She gives it everything she's got and accelerates, putting some distance between her and the millions of SCP-019-2 entities. Dr. Light slams through the exit door and immediately closes it behind her. She manages to slide the metal locking bar into place. The impact from the wave of creatures against the door sends her stumbling backwards. She is safe now. As Light lays on the ground panting and staring at the door, she thinks to herself, Well, they'll all be dead in a couple of days, and then we can try again. Now watch SCP-001, which is the real 001 SCP animation, or check out SCP-823 Carnival of Horrors SCP animation.